Hello, and welcome to the Yoga Shed Studio. I have a program for today, which I've designed especially for dealing with stiffness in the upper part of the back and um, in the hips. That seems to be something that we encounter from time to time, and sometimes it just hangs around and becomes a chronic stiffness. So let's see if we can deal with that in this practice, which I think you'll find is therapeutic, remedial, and for sure, very gentle and accessible for most people. Let's begin on the mat. I have a cushion for supporting my neck and my head when I'm lying down. And it gives me comfort. You might not need something like that. But along the way in this session, we'll be doing various things that offer you options. So you can have that extra support or not. And we'll start out in the way that we do yoga practice, which is to do a kind of check-in. See how at the beginning of our practice we feel on all those le levels that yoga addresses. So physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. And if we do that with eyes closed, it might be easier to get a read on what's happening. And a really good place to start is to notice the breath and bring awareness just to the breath as it is, not trying to change it or make it any different than the way it is, just noticing. And then you might also notice how you're feeling throughout the whole of your body. Are there any parts of your body that stand out because they feel tense or um, uncomfortable in any way? But it's also good to notice where you feel very relaxed in your body. And finally, as you've been here for a minute or two, does it feel like you're finally be able, being able to settle in and yield the body to the support of gravity? We'll move on from here with a very simple exercise. I'm going to bend up my legs and take away this support, which I might not need for the next part but that's your choice too. In the upper body, just to mobilize the shoulder area, the shoulder, shoulder girdle, I'm going to tuck my tips of my shoulders down towards the floor and then lift them up. If we go back and forth between those two potentials, we want to bring the breath in to support the movement. So I'm going exhale towards the floor, inhale, releasing. Exhale, tips of the shoulders downward, inhale, releasing. We want the breath to be the impetus in all the movements that we make throughout the session. And we'll pause there and consolidate. Take a moment and feel your two feet on the floor. We're going to work into the um, hip lift, which in yoga we lift up into little bridge poses or Setu Bandhasana in sa Sanskrit. Pressing into your feet, draw the tailbone just a little ways away from the floor. It's a little, it's a tiny movement. And then releasing 
pressing down through the feet and using the backs of the thighs, the hamstrings to lift up and then releasing the weight of the pelvis. If we want to continue and go further with this, we might peel up so the hips are more elevated and then peeling back down. The thrust of the pose comes from the leg work and the hamstrings and the gluteal muscles. We want to bring mobility to the whole of the spine. And after you lower down this time, we'll move on to cat cow pose. So we're going to be kneeling on all fours. Hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. And in the um, manner of the pose, we lift the spine up towards the ceiling in a rainbow shape and then release the spine towards the floor. And dipping the spine and then lifting it. Now let's add an element here to take the pose a little further. When you dip the spine, move the breastplate forward and contract the shoulder blades. When you lift the spine up towards the ceiling, lift from the navel center so that we mobilize the lower part of the spine. And with the breath, inhaling and looking out towards the floor in front of you or the horizon, and exhaling, drawing the front body to the back body. Notice if you're tensing your shoulders and allow them to set back towards your hips. And in this fashion, we're working the whole of the spine from the neck down to the tailbone. Let's finish there and bringing the elbows down towards the floor allows you to rest your wrists, bring the elbows back a little bit, and then move the hips back towards the heels. Just go um, within your range of movement there so that this still feels like a comfortable position. I'm bringing my hips all the way to the floor because I've been trained to do this <laughs> over many, many years. It's a simple movement for for you for me, but you might have some knee issues that don't allow you to do this. So let's come up to standing and <coughs> all the way up. And let's take up one more movement for the shoulders and the shoulder girdle. And I'm going to use a yoga block for this. Standing near to the wall, the block goes onto my upper part of bat, my back and um, sort of sits over the inner shoulder blades. If I move myself back into a wall space, then I can work towards gripping that block with my um, upper part of my back. The arms are loose by my side the elbows soft, the backs of the knees soft. Tips of the shoulders back and down. Shoulders forward and releasing forward. With the breath, we can go inhaling, I'm opening the chest. Exhaling, I'm relaxing. The head sits right over the center of the shoulders. Just avoid bringing the head forward. If you can, keep it back. Inhale, opening the whole of the chest, the collarbones. Exhale, releasing in that area. Let's go two more times. Back and down. 
and then forward and releasing. Last one. Lovely. And then letting all of that go. And continuing this work with the upper body and the shoulders and the sh shoulder girdle. Let's have you stand a uh, stand in Tadasana. The feet are slightly apart. The um, buttocks are firm but not clenched. And the arms just loose by the side of your body. Let's take a breathing exercise that will allow you to get a little more rotation in your neck. So, right hand comes up and to the left shoulder and you drop the, the elbow. We're going to dip the chin towards the chest, exhaling, and then inhaling, lifting the chin and opening the arm out to the side to whatever degree you can. Exhaling, bringing that arm back in and chin down. Inhale, the chin lifts a little bit as you bring your arm out to the side. So you're looking for your comfortable range of movement. And we'll improve it as we go along, but over maybe days or weeks. <clears throat> As I've been saying, the breath is the main thing here, and it motivates your movement. And we'll complete that side. And left hand, left uh, right shoulder. Drop your elbow, drop your chin. Inhale, your gaze follows the line of your hands out to the side. And then as you bring it in, and chin down and elbow down. Inhale, the gesture is graceful because your elbow is relaxed. And then releasing and the arms supported on the chest, chin down. Go again. We're working on the left side movement, but keep your right shoulder passive. Last one. And releasing. Let's take some shoulder shrugs in a relaxed manner. So lifting the shoulders up towards the ears and then lowering down them, slow, them slowly. Feel your shoulder blades move down at the same time. Shoulders come up and the shoulders are elevating too. And shoulders down and the chest feels really free when you do that. Inhale to lift. Exhale to release. And now we can add some rolls of the shoulders. So rolling back. In everything that we're doing, we're looking to see what might be our body limits, where it feels like if we step over that limit, it's very uncomfortable. Just make sure that you're never moving towards pain. And then let's go forward. Roll of the shoulders. You might be relating to what's happening in the back. You can't see it, but you can feel the movement of the muscles and the shoulder blades. And then we'll bring that to a pause. Let's take a, a lift of the right arm out to the right side. So a lateral lift. And you're just going as far as that movement will allow in your shoulder and your arm and down. Now I could go higher than this, but what you want to do is adjust the movement so that you're just shy of that moment where you think, oh, I'm just going to go too far if I go further. If you do this with consistency, this program, you might find that you get more opening as you go along. And second side. OK, 
Consistency seems to be the name of the game. This might be a practice that you do a couple of times a week. The arm comes up, but the shoulder is not lifting. Very good. And then relax your shoulders. And let's have a seat on a chair. Where your um, not using the chair to lean back on. You're just going to um, use your back muscles to keep your um, good posture and sitting up and a little bit towards the front of your sitting bones. All right. And then separate your feet. Let's see. A little wider than the chair legs. We're going to let the knee drop into the midline of your body. Let's say the right knee and then bring it out. Knee in. I'm not really pushing with my hand. My hand's just resting there on the upper thigh. And knee in. And knee out. And what you're doing is you're working through the knee rotation to the midline, but you're also mainly working through the hip. So getting a little bit of mobility in that right hip. Let's stop there and be, bring in the left knee movement. So we're just emphasizing adduction, bringing the thigh in towards the middle line of your body and out. And knee in and knee out. Now what if we change this up and step the feet in and the knees in and then move the knee out to the side for a groin stretch. So the knee and the hip rotate out, outwards, and bring it in. Notice your breathing as you do this, and let the breath be like a metronome that keeps time with the movement. Let's say exhale out, inhale in, exhale out, Inhale in. One more. And second side. Now you're familiar with the movement. But if we stay aware of the breath and every breath and every phase of the breath, then it won't become a perfect, perfunctory or a mechanical movement. It'll feel like you're right there as you move. You're in the present moment. And last time, just hard for me to do as I'm talking. <laughs> and then knees together, feet are together. We'll do a stretch for the um, outer hip muscles. And I'm going to sit on a bolster. It's a very little bolster, so not a lot of height. But it's going to make it easier with um, any stiffness in the hips. So you might want to find a cushion or a folded blanket to sit on. I'm going to bring up the right leg and hold the shin bone at, or the ankle, the foot, and bring the right foot onto the left thigh. And sitting up tall and definitely not forcing the knee downwards, but Gravity does a bit of that work, and the knee drops out. The hip opens up. Let's go left side. And this is my stiffer side. You might have noticed that as I brought the leg up. And we're opening the groin um, and the hip on the left side now. Let's go a few rounds. On repetition, it might become a little smoother. My stiff side is still stiff. And one more round. Let's give it one more go. That definitely got easier on the third round. 
All right, and then two feet on the floor. We're going to come up to standing now and do a few one-legged balancing poses, but with the support of the chair. So let's work like this in this manner. We'll <clears throat> take a side leg lift. And if we balance now on left leg, we have the support of the chair there. Right hand, right hip, and then right leg lifts out to the side and back. Right leg to the side and back. So you notice that I bring the feet back together when um, we finish that movement, the side movement. Lateral lift and pause. Avoid tipping yourself over towards the left side. If you did, it would look like this. We're trying to keep the body in one postural line. And right leg to the right and pause. A little lift, and then a little rest. Let's go side two. You can just um, turn around, <laughs> unless you want to be looking at the camera. I'm going to move my chair. Left hand, left hip. Balance on your right foot and feel a strong footing through the right foot and the right ankle. Left leg to the left, and back. Lift and step in. Let's say with the breath, find your own breath rhythm. I think inhale when I lift, exhale when I pause. All right, last one and coming to a standstill. We'll move on and take a Facing the high part of the chair, if you're using the chair there for balance with your hands, I recommend that. We're going to take um, the weight onto the right foot and pitch forward slightly from the tops of your thighs, the bottom of your torso, and bring that left leg behind you, behind the line of the body, and then back. Take that leg back and then come back to home base. Leg comes back, and the lift is from the back of your thigh, hamstrings, and gluteal muscles. And last one, kicking the leg back, coming forward, and then standing on your two feet in good posture. You might occasionally Play with that movement of the shoulder girdle and draw the tips of the shoulders back, the chest lifted. And then let's start all over on the second side and then balancing your weight onto your left foot. Feel the footprint and then bring the right leg back behind the line of the body and in. Without leaning to the left side, right leg comes back and up. And inhale back, exhale to standing straight. Inhale back, exhale to standing straight. Last one back, and settle, two feet on the ground. And there's one more that we can do here. We'll take a side-on position to the high part of the chair again. And balancing on your right foot, flex your left knee and bring your left knee towards your chest. If you reach around and hold the front of the knee, you might be able to raise the leg a little bit higher and straighten your posture without stooping forward. You place your foot to the floor. Go again. So flexion and release. Flexing your knee, flexing at the hip. And release. And last time. And finally, two feet on the ground. 
So I'm trying to avoid as much as possible using my core muscles um, to um, keep from a swaying of the body. So let's go without swaying to the left side. Balance on your left foot. Bring your right knee towards your chest. You can clutch at the front of it. Bring it in a little bit. And replace. Knee up. Thigh in slightly. And down. So we're trying to make these movements as fluid as possible. And maybe that's just something that happens over time on repetition. All right, and then we're coming to standing on our own two feet again. And a very um, helpful movement is to open and close the hip. So in that one-legged stance again, balancing on your right leg, let's see if we can open the knee to the side and then bring it back to center. Opening the leg out and back to center. So we're not pushing the knee in or out. Your hand's just resting lightly on the top of the knee. All right, and then what's that like if we do that on the other side? And being curious about what this side might be like. And knee out and knee in. It might not show, but I can feel it very much that when I do this movement on the right side, the movement is more fluid. But almost as though the hip is a little bit too loose. I need more strengthening there. Okay, good. And then the two feet on the ground. We're going to return to the mat now. So um, take a lying down position again. But I ask you to be face down. And as you um, stretch out on your mat, um, fold your arms and <clears throat> rest your hands one on top of the other and rest your forehead onto your ha top hand. Then do a little waggle through your hips and feel like you're lying fairly evenly on the two points at the front of your hips. So you've got the crests of your hips, right and left, and the pubic bone. It just helps you um, allow the spine to be long at the base of the spine and supported. So come to rest on your forehead now and bring your arms back alongside your body. And for the last time, let's drop the shoulders towards the floor and then lift them away. Tips of the shoulders are down and then they're lifting up. Think about the picture of this. If you lift your tips of your shoulders, it's as though your back body's contracted into the center of your spine. Then you release and drop the shoulders, and the back is wide again. Find your breath rhythm and do two or three more of these. Now we're coming to the close of this session. So let's do that uh, as Shavasana, relatively short Shavasana. So lying on your back, pull any props in that you need for your own comfort. And what I have is just the mat to support me today. And that feels fine in my body. It actually feels like my body's more open from the practice that we've done. Tuck your shoulders down and then find which way works better for your shoulders. Your arms rolling out. And feel your lower body from your hips down to your feet. 
and yield the weight of your lower body to the floor, buttocks, those big and broad muscles of the upper um, leg, of the thighs, calf muscles spread on the floor, release, and all of your foot bones and your toes relaxing. Take a few deeper cycles of breathing where the exhalation being prolonged allows you to wait, drop the weight of the body. On successive exhalations, sending the message to the body and the mind to let go. Nothing more to do here. Nothing at all. Now, thinking without moving yet, thinking about we'll exit from the pose in the most gentle and quiet way. So take time to bend your legs up and roll over onto your side, but stay there for a few breaths more. You can fold your arm and rest your head into the cradle of your arm. And over several breaths, allowing your eyes to flutter open. And helping yourself up. Come to take a seat cross-legged or in kneeling seated position. What's comfortable for you. And once seated, bring the hands into prayer position in front of your chest. And take a moment, just close my eyes for this part. And feeling into my body, my breath, my shoulders, my hips, the whole of the body. And the gesture that we make with the hands is one of respect for ourselves, respect for the divinity, the goodness, the kindness that lives in us, and that we want to share with everyone. Thank you for practicing with me. Namaste.